So hey, I'm Ben Gill um, with Knox Free Film in Motion, as she said. Um, we typically sound like brand storytelling and motion design, um, and we help brands demystify who they are and what they do. Um, I'm the director um, and owner, and I typically wear like writer, director, editor hats, and uh, I'm really into brainstorming and concepting the videos. There's three phases um, to create anything in film, pre-production, production, and post-production. And honestly, the phase that's most important and like most affects the quality of the final film is not the shoot or the edit, but it's the prep. Um, in pre-production, you get to do all the planning and research and add as much intentionality to your film as possible. And part of this process is pre-visualizing your film as many times and like ways as possible so that you're hundred percent confident in what you need and what you don't and everything will turn out and cut together well in the edit. Production is expensive and you never have time on set to really think about things. So if you're trying to be uh, changing things and being like super intentional, like on the spot, it can be really hard. And it's really nice to be able to like, look back at some of your documents or like references that you created in prep. And so now I'm gonna show some examples from our work. The first one I'm gonna show is this one, which is Food Supply Partners. It's a brand documentary um, and they are a food supplier right um, in Daytona Beach and they provide the food ingredients for like a ton of restaurants in Volusia County. Um, we chose to focus on some of the restaurants they serve and kind of like script out a dramatic film that had them come alongside these restaurants and help them achieve their dreams of having a successful restaurant. The first step when you're talking to a client like this is to have a meeting with them. Um, and we call that a discovery meeting where we just like go in and like ask them a ton of questions. Um, let me pull up my notes. So like this is an example of like the notes that I'd pull out of a discovery meeting with them um, where you're just like asking them like a ton of questions and trying to get some of these like authentic sound bites out of the mouths of the CEOs. It's like sometimes they say one sentence where you're like that's the essence of it everything brand is about and if you're not there recording it or at least like writing it down like you'll miss it so you'll see i have like a ton of stuff in here and um i think this one's a better example too we have i start pulling some inspiration based on that and maybe even some shot ideas that popped into my head and some videos that i'd seen and just kind of like throwing this is like the beginning of the creative process so everything goes you know anything that's like slightly um in the vein of what you want to do just to kind of like throw it in this document and then you're like slowly refining it into the final film so from there like while i'm doing the meeting i usually will take some photos of the um, location because that might be your um, best chance or last chance to to see the locations before you show up if you don't get to do a real location scout um, and these really help when you're drawing storyboards that you at least like know what the environments look like and I swear, like most of the time, the exact buildings and actions they show me in the in their like walkthrough, I'm like writing them into the film. Like, um, so like here's like a meat shop that they have that I immediately was like, oh, if we turn off all the lights in here, like it's gonna look awesome. So, um, and they have all, like nice analog buttons, and you know, there's just things that you notice on, even on a first impression that you can take some photos of. I usually um, take all those notes and start putting them into a script um, and this is kind of like a documentary script structure where like one side is what you see and one side is what you hear and I went like an interview approach here so um, I didn't actually like want to script out what they said because I wanted it to be authentic um, and even these scripted scenes are based on like what they actually do so it's like tell me the process of an ingredient arriving at the warehouse all the way to it being like a plated dish and i just like let the owner say that you know and then that helps you like map out a narrative journey along that once you have this it's pretty easy to think of the shots that you want to show so i i st i'm still in sheets here um and this is, i'm bringing in some of those things that swanee just spoke about like wide shot medium shot medium close-up um sometimes even doing like the lens frames per second if it's slow-mo or something um, and what support. So we did documentary style, like all easy rig, but we did have some drone. Um, and then here's like the description. And even over here, I started to just throw in the shot that felt like that scene. So some of these 
I even have like a sun seeker, I think for like one of these, which shows you like the sun path. So just like kind of just throwing everything that helps me get to the place of seeing the film before we show up. So this is the shot list that, that I then brought in to do storyboards and I can't draw worth anything. So my, mine are pretty crude, but I, it took me a long time to get like perspective and stuff. Right. So I have like a mix between perspective and stick figures like Swati showed. So um, here's kind of like um, an example of some of the pages that I had here. And this one is like leading into this one. So I'm like kind of drawing either blocking, or like connecting shots that help help that come across, hopefully. Um, and let's see, where's some with like some action. So like this one's a dolly, push it in like past this person's shoulder and you see like, have like a little description of what you're showing here. And a lot of these descriptions are coming straight from the shot list. Um, and it takes a while, depending on how long your film is to draw all these, even at like a crude level, but it's like at this point, you can really visualize the film. It's like, oh, is this going to cut together like this to this to this? You have to actually tangibly show it, you know? Um, whereas like this shot list is still a little intangible and it's just words. Whereas like now it's much closer to like a visual medium here, which is what the final will be. Right before we, we go to set, I usually like convert this one more time and kind of combine all my materials. And so I turn this into like, what I call a master document, where I have the script, just the visuals of the script, the storyboards, and then the visual inspiration, because sometimes these are better than, than even my pictures, just because they, they show like tonality, exposure, color, you know? Um, so this is kind of like what I had in a binder on set. And it ended up being really, really helpful because these restaurants, I think we had like I'm sure you remember, Swan, I swear we had like two hours to shoot everything with these restaurants, including an interview. Yeah, really quick. So it was, so it was like, I did not have time to think about anything new or like if I didn't know what I needed, yeah, I don't know what I would have got because I could just look at this binder and be like, oh, I need a shot of this. I need a shot of them opening the box, you know, like chopping it up and and like, these were the angles that I thought I needed. Like now I can look at them, be like, do I want that shot or do I want this shot? Cause I only have time for one. I won't try to play it, but this is like a little thing I made, which was like the storyboards next to the, f the edit, like the final edit of the film. And it's always surprising to see like how close some of the ideas are to like what the final image ends up looking like. The storyboards don't have to be super like fancy and nice like these communicate perspective and scale and those and that's really all we needed um for i have like snap here which i had like a professional artist doing and like it's night and day compared to mine like how much better these are but they um they just really help you like see a version of the film before you show up i love ben's pre-production work because it makes my job on set so much easier because when he's doing all the pre-production, he's sharing that uh, folder of images with me so I can look at the area and I can say, okay, these are what lights we need to bring. These are what stands we need to bring. This is what type of grip and, and support that I can offer you to make these shots happen. The reference photos really help, like he said, show the tone and the mood of what the lighting is supposed to look like. Um, so I do bring the proper fixtures uh, to make sure that we're copying that mood. And also, you know, when you mentioned we were at that um, restaurant and we had to set up for the interview, I can set up to the interview really quickly, get that all set up. You guys can do the interview. And while that is happening and I don't need to be there, I can go ahead and set up for the other parts that were going to take place. So you're really kind of maximizing your time when you're there um, without having to communicate all of this stuff to your crew because you have such great pre production work already done. It could be like a a creative island sometimes as like the director or the creative director where you're like you've been lit sitting on this for like a month and then you're showing up to set and you're like oh well i'll just be able to tell everyone what i want and it's like that's not always the case you're getting pulled in every direction especially if it's like a client work you know like you're the one who has to talk to the client also you can't be like telling every crew member like exactly your dreams so it's like 
getting to the point where everyone's seeing the same movie before you show up or like on set, like you see the same thing that I see. It's, I think it's harder to get misconstrued when you have a picture. Um, I guess one other way you could visualize that we used a lot on this last shoot um, together was overheads. Mm. Um, I don't think I, I don't think we ended up using overheads for this, but that's like one other way where like, if you've been to these spaces, you can, here, I can pull one up while we're talking here. But here's, um, I think we created this with Shot Designer. It's like an iPhone app and desktop app. But this is like another way of forcing you to like think about the space and you, and you can very quickly see like, oh, this isn't gonna fit in here. You know, when you actually like make a room and like a bathtub <laughs> where it gets, it gets real tight real fast. And uh, I know we found out on set like how tight it really can be and like, oh, this bathtub doesn't move. So we need to get this Dana Dolly on top of the bathtub and um, let me get out. That also bathtub, helped but. me too, because I was able to bring other things with me to set that I wouldn't have brought, you know, like I brought a four foot piece of wood so we could lay that over top of the bathtub. So then we could put Apple boxes to raise the dolly up to then put the camera up, you know, so there were things that I needed to bring um, as a gaffer and a grip to the set to make these shots happen. And by looking at Ben's storyboards, I was able to kind of see everything and, and the way he's planned everything out and the way he kind of wanna, wants to light things. Um, it was awesome because we could set up the spaces before we were shooting. I think um, people are really surprised on how much thought goes into creating something. Um, there is all this time in pre-production that needs to happen. Uh, when you only have, you know, a day or two to shoot this, you're probably doing, you know, two weeks or more of pre-production to make those two days on set go really quickly. Early in my career, like, I feel like I did like a lot more just showing up and shooting and stuff like that, where it's like, it's a food supplier, it's a warehouse. Like we could have just showed up and like get people stacking boxes like in slow motion and like hear from the CEO. But um, I think this makes it like a much more compelling like human story. Yeah, you're adding more emotion and more quality to the actual piece that you're giving them somebody else who's just kind of coming in and just shooting everything, <laughs> spraying and praying, right? Uh, it really adds value to what you're doing and it really separates your company from everybody else. You know, why would I choose Oxenfree? Well, because they're gonna bring this quality and this level of research to my brand that's gonna make me stand out in ways that I might have trouble visually communicating to everybody else. Um, so it really helps you, know, you and the client come together to make something that's more than they really expected. And that's, you know, as a business owner, what you wanted to give your client is something that they really love and that they're really excited for. How do you communicate value? Um, because like, it's one thing to be like, oh, I should charge more, I should charge more, I should charge more. But it's like, what does that mean? You know, like, how are, are they getting more than what they're getting from the video production company down the street? Um, it's like the more that you can communicate that and like get into the headspace of like, okay, say we want to start charging $50,000 for every project. It's like, okay, well, do you think you can just charge for that without changing anything about how you work or like what level of detail you put in? It's like, you got to put yourself in the mindset of like, what would a, a company that charges $50,000 for a video, what level of pre-production and like value are they adding and how can you do that at a lower level and like build your way back up to it? I really love storyboards. I think they're great. Um, I love getting them, um, you know, and I use them all the time. And like I said, Ben provides such awesome storyboards that I kind of get a little spoiled. <laughs> so when I go work with other people, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I'm like, this might be a little bit more rough than a set that I would work with Ben, you know? So who would I want to work with as a professional more if somebody called me and said, hey, I got a, a job on the 12th. Am I going to work for Ben? Am I going to work for this person? going to work for Ben because he has his stuff together and, and I know that that makes my job easier to elevate what I'm doing. I definitely studied a lot of David Fincher when I was in film school so it's like he's a, such a perfectionist filmmaker and he's definitely not the guy who's just going to show up and it's going to be perfect you know like his films feel perfect for a reason um, so I've always like tried to bring that to a documentary space which is kind of a probably flying in the face of some of the documentary documentarians over the years but I just like I want it to be perfect in my mind, I guess. Prep helps with that.